you guys knew that I was going to make this video. It's been busy, so we appreciate if you like, subscribe. Um, Hamza's gone on loan to Watford with an option to buy, with him going out of contract at the end of the season. I'm gutted, gutted. I knew the same was coming. Um, I'm not as gutted as I was with Schmeichel. This one seemed a bit inevitable. But I'm here to prove and to tell people why I'm such a big Hamza Chowdhury fan. One of the reasons is because the player, another reason is because of my background. We'll get into all of that as we go through. First of all, I just want to say, Ross Rogers, you've kind of just disowned him. And it's really frustrating because I'm a massive Hamza fan. And he's so talented. He's such a talented player. Was he as good as a DM as, as Wilfred and Diddy? No. People forget how where he came from and what matches he played in. He was played in... He was, so, so the first match I was at when... I'm so glad and so grateful. I remember seeing him on the bench. Um, I'll give a long story. I'll, I'll give you the long story because it's more of an informal chat, this one, compared to what videos we normally do. We, I was living in London at the time. Uh, it was myself and it was the 2-0 that we beat Everton in the Everton in 2017, I want to say, when we when Craig Shakespeare was in charge and we played or 20, yeah, 2017, and we played against Liverpool in the EFL Cup. I was living in London, my flatmate who I was sharing the flat with, and two of my friends, both Liverpool supporters, went to drive up the M1, left about three o'clock. Um, left about three o'clock, try and get to the game for eight o'clock. Thought it was going to be enough time. Turns out the M1 was shut, so we had to go all through the back roads, five hour driving. We missed the first half. Apparently, nothing happened too much, so it was not too bad. Um, but got there, got to the ground, um, sitting in the homestand. They they were quite respectful, but uh, since it this first foot, the first time seeing Liverpool as well, um, majority of them. Uh, and Hamza comes on. And it was just such a big moment for me that somebody from my background, somebody, an Asian guy, because a little side tangent, I've seen so many Asian players grow up um, playing football. Along. I'm, I'm used to football. Genuinely, I'm like Bambi on ice, terrible footballer. Um, not the strongest, um, but I'm not a good football player. But I know so many growing up in Leicester. So, so many that were so talented, so quick, uh, especially attacking players that were just fantastic to watch. And I was like, oh, this guy's going to go on and do amazing, just athletes in general. But there was always, again, a combination of family that wanted to, I've had this conversation with a few Asian people where a lot of Asians and a lot of immigrants in general will want to play what they call the safe, the safe ball, be a doctor, be an engineer, be a lawyer, be something that is safe. And as good as that is, and I understand the, the knowledge of that, we need somebody from our background to take risks, to go into a stadium and go, right, my son or my daughter is going, is, is, is really talented at this and give them the opportunity. And it's not just with Asians. I know other parents from like African backgrounds and Eastern European backgrounds that they said the same thing. We didn't move to this country for you to go and kick a ball and, and not make it and risk it. But we need them people within our, our group to go and succeed. And Chowdhury was one of them. I'm so happy and so great that he actually made it and that he's from my club and that he, he grew up at eight years old. If you see the picture of him, um, eight years old signed his contract and it was on um, no context LC no context LCFC on Twitter which was just funny um he was he was brilliant and again when Hamza came on that game didn't really do anything wrong didn't really do anything he just did it had an okay game in the same way that for those of you that can't remember a more recent KDH against Brentford not the game we just played but I'm talking about the game when he first came on for the cameo performance Still was a good player, went out alone and it smashed it. Smashed it at Burton, at Burton his two times. I was like, and he captained the under 23s. I saw them very, very, a few times as well. Games were a pound down at the King Power Stadium, sell out one of the tiers, go down, chat with some mates, see Hamza Chowdhury captain. And again, just proud just in that, just saying that there's an Asian guy and he's captain Leicester City. This is so awesome. People forget how good Hamza was 
And his career has been stunted by a couple of things. One, um, a manager uh, manager under Brendan Rodgers who refused to play him, has played Mendy over him. In my opinion, Hamza's better than Mendy, offers more than Mendy. I like Mendy, but I think Hamza offers more. And when he's come in, he's performed. If he had a, and also, second of all, um, Wilfred Ndidi. Wilfred Ndidi is a better centre-back. Uh, so he's better centre-back. Better CDM. I'll admit that. But Hamza gives you something. He gives you that grit, that determination. He knows what it means to play for the badge. The recent game against Brentford was a perfect example. If we would have taken in Diddy off, put Hamza in, he would have not let that situation happen. Did he have a mistake in him? Yes. Did he, again, I remember the 1-0 against Aston Villa, I think over lockdown, 2020, I want to say. Yeah, where the ball ended up putting, put, um, Ross Barkley ended up putting it away. He was he made mistakes, no problem. Um, but there's there's things that he's kind of tied up from his game. He's too the thing people say he's too rash. He's a walking red card, and has he got a red for Leicester City? Yes, I think it was against Wolves. I want to say um, a couple of years ago. I think when they got the, the, the two VAR offside goals, but he sorted that out from his game. And when he's come into the squad. And when he's called upon, which is not, look at last season, wasn't very often at all. He went and he succeeded. Um, he was, so I'll give you a couple of examples. One of my favorite memories to this day, and I was literally in tears, um, just, 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 just crying a little bit, to be perfectly honest with you, is when he captained the team against Brighton in the EFL Cup. He's playing in a, a double pivot with KDH and they were, Again, the game wasn't the best, but it, it meant so much to me to see a British Asian player really succeed at Leicester from, again, I know he's from Loughborough, but grew up through our academy. And there was a documentary, I can't remember where it was, um, and seeing him succeed and listen to his parents talk about, his, his mum talk about his story and how they moved from Loughborough to Leicester to further his career. And we need more people like that within our Asian community to break into it. We've seen it with um, black people in general, overrepresented in terms of British footballers in a good way. Um, but they, I've always lacked and go, that's fantastic. I want one of mine. I want one of mine. I wanted Hamza to be that player that would end up captaining England. Then I would buy a shirt uh, with England on it. Once, once Hamza got in and that was my beacon of light. He's gone to Watford on loan. I be truly believe he will succeed. With a decent run of games, he he's just unbelievable. When he came into the squad again, coming back to the Liverpool game, but again, under Claude Puel, where, again, look, it, looking back at it, it's like a fever dream. Wilfred Ndidi, Hamza Chowdhury and Mendy, all in that midfield. I think it's 4-3-3 three, three, and we were playing three CDMs. But Hamza was a big reason why we kept winning those games. We went and beat Chelsea 1-0. Uh, Madison flicked onto Vardy, Vardy put it away. And then the next game, we went and beat um, we went and beat Man City. 2-1, Ricardo, like an 80th minute thunderbolt. Unbelievable strike. Hopefully he gets better soon as well. Then the next game, I know we went on to play him the formation, lost to Cardiff last minute of the game. Uh, but in terms of that, Hamza, that's where Hamza, for me, thrived in that pressure, playing in that, that deep position. Now, when you play through two other CDMs alongside him, you, you didn't get the best out of him because they, they were getting each other's way. Him and, and Diddy, when they used to play together, they, they would naturally take up them same positions and it just wouldn't work. But his physicality, his determination, his grit, he goes, nothing is going to beat me. I'm going to show why I mean something for the team. I loved him. Loved him. Um even recently, you're looking back to when we had a huge COVID and injury outbreak, we were Watford, we were down to like nine players. We had to play loads of the under 23s, Hamza Chowdhury and Yannick Vestergaard in a back two. And then Vontae Daly Campbell playing on the left, Mark Hall Bryson playing right back. Hamza Chowdhury thrived, thrived. And nobody can tell me any different. He went out there and performed at such a good level that it was less. Well, Brendan Rogers said, Lester Mascherano. Even he was saying it. Lester Mascherano. And if you've know, if you follow me on Twitter, you've probably seen it. It's still my profile picture. And it will be for some time because that was such a proud moment. Again, he, he was not even featured in the squad. Sometimes he wasn't even featured in the in the in the starting eleven. Not even on the bench. 
He came in and he did a job alongside Yannick Vestergaard, who I'm not a fan of. In a back two, we know it doesn't work. And they did what they needed to do. He wasn't perfect at it, but he gave, he gave it everything. And it meant so much to me. And the fact is, Rogers labeled him Lester Mascherano and then didn't play him again. Such a disappointment. So, so disappointed in Rogers um, for that. He's a talented guy. He really is. And he's taken that rash out of the game. He's a more composed person now. He's still got that aggression, that physicality that we do lack at Leicester City, especially in the midfield before KDH kind of came in. But he gives you that. And he could have performed really, really well. Another game that really impressed me was Liverpool, sorry, Leicester 3, Arsenal 0. Him was all over that midfield. I think playing alongside in Diddy, um, and this was under Brendan Rodgers, I want to say. Let me know in the comments. Again, I might have got that wrong. He was, he bossed that midfield. Torreira didn't have a chance. I remember Torreira was like, get off the ball. I want this. The desire, the passion. And you need more than passion to win a game. I know Ant says that all the time, and I totally agree. But he had the ability to go to the top people in that league and stay there. The Chelsea's, the Arsenal's, the Man City's. And he was, he was a player that was destined for great at Leicester. Then Brendan came. And indeed, he's going to be number one. I don't really have a problem with that. Give Hamza a chance. He didn't. Even recently, I went to Derby away and he put Hamza, he put, um, he put him in as a, as a number eight, like a further forward. And I just looked at what, what the hell are you doing? Man? Why are you doing this? Um, and it's he, he will succeed at Watford he will succeed whether he gets them back but they will want him they will want to buy him I guarantee you that now but I know it's all over the place but it's just again if Hamza if you're watching probably not probably not you're not watching Hamza and that's totally fine by me um, but thank you there's just been from, from an Asian fan watching football Never even occurred to me that an Asian player would play for my team. Never occurred to me. Didn't think it would happen. And you've done it. And you've done it at the highest level, against some of the highest opposition. And you've shown people that, who's this suit? Who's this guy with massive guy with the afro? Looks like a microphone running around. Looks like my microphone, if anybody's looking like that. Um, yes, I'll put that back in. But essentially, he was a... He's done it against top opposition. Against, um, it's not a top opposition, AK Athens scored a goal. Super happy for that. Chowdhury has looked great. He's not had the most complete career. He's not had the most, but he's going to go and smash it. People haven't been as big of fans as I have, but I've stuck by him. And at times, yeah, he's not looked great. But when people cannot deny um the games he's played and what he's done. He was always taken off early, which really annoyed me. Look at the 1-0 we played against um, uh, against Liverpool this season, uh, last season, sorry. 28, we played Hamza, we played Samora, we played KDH as our midfield three. And we won the game. Chowdhury was in that team He and he battled and he gave everything and we had to shut out Liverpool, which was hard. That Liverpool team was so hard. But And then again, substitute for 60 minutes. For what reason? Don't know. Um, we did go on to win the game at the end, I think. He, he came off, somebody else came off, and then you brought on Luckman, looked at scoring. Rodgers, give you credit for that, no problem. But people forget Hamza, and they go, oh, he's a bit of the deadwood. He's not. He's not but the deadwood. There will be people on Twitter, and I guarantee you, in three months' time, when he's bossing it at Watford, getting back in the team, blah, 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 he's going to do it. I believe in him. I believe in he's such a good player and such a good overall um, CDM. And he's everything I wanted in a CDM. And let alone, and the fact that he captained Brighton, and it's such a loss, man. It's such a loss. And I know... We've got some other players coming through in that position and we've got, we're overstacked in that position. But watch him go at Watford in the championship and thrive. I just hope that he, if indeed he is going to move on, that we end up bringing him back in. 
it's, it's really disappointing, man. It's really disappointing we let go of him. But again, just want to say thanks, Hamza. All the memories, all the brilliant memories that you've given us for an Asian fan. And you know, going and, and, and if you've been to the King Power, you see how many Asians there are going to the games. Young, small, old. Just like the city, it's super diverse. And Hamza represents us. I've been talking to a few Asian fans and we absolutely love him. And we want him, we want the best for him. And the best for him at the moment in time is going to loan in the championship for Watford, who will push to probably come back into the Premier League. They'll be fighting for the top spots. And I'm hoping Ham's going to be a big part of that. It's not over yet. But it does feel like the beginning of the end. It's felt like for a while. But Rogers has done a disservice. He's done a disservice to, to Hamza. Really has. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, subscribe. No, no, no idea how long this will be going on. But I've covered what I need to cover. Uh, it is a little bit more structured than the, the Casper one. But I just thought I'd want to get my few minutes take on that. Because he's a great player. He's a great player. And I'm hoping this isn't the end. Maybe this is the only needs to go and have a consistent run of games because he hasn't had it. He hasn't had a consistent run of games. And when he's had a few games, substituted off at 60 minutes, especially under Rogers. So disappointing, man. Uh, but I'm um, hopefully he goes and smashes it at Watford. Thank you, Hamza, for all your memories. It was bound to happen just inevitably, but it was my club and it was my team that decided they're going to give the Asian guy a chance. And they're going, and not just on terms of um, diversity, in terms of merit. When he's come in and when he performed, he did what he needed to do. And people will forget that. People will forget that, ah, he wasn't good enough to get in the first team, blah, blah, blah. He was a genuinely good, he's still young. He's still young. He's still 25. He's not, reached, he's not in the twilight of his career just yet. He's not reached his prime. There's still a lot more that Hamza, so I'll be following at Watford. I will make sure that I will pay attention because hopefully he's one of a few many. And for us, for when I have kids, hopefully, and I want to look at them and go, go take that risk. It is possible. It, you can go and do this. I've seen it done it in Hamza. And I would love the next generation of, of Asian players to come in, British Asian players, to come in and hopefully feature for England, feature for Leicester, I'm all over it. But yeah, from one Asian to another, <laughs> that's a terrible way to end the video. Hamza, thank you so much, man. You've, you've meant a lot to us Asian fans, uh, from Leicester specifically. And um, you were a generation. To, to a certain extent, you were one of the first to do it. To this day, one of the most capped Asian, um, British Asian players to make it. And it was for my club. My club. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. See you all in the next video. Goodbye.